Hello everyone, my name is Piyush and welcome back to AZ900 with Piyush. This is video number 15 and in this particular video, we're going to talk all about Azure storage. What are different types of storages such as blob storage, table, file share, queues and access tiers such as hot tier, cool tier, archival, then redundancy options in Azure storage. And then we will be logging into Azure portal and doing a demo of creating an Azure blob storage. At the end, we will be doing knowledge checks for AZ900 sample exam questions as always. So please make sure to watch the video till the end. And without any further ado, let's get into it. You can store a massive amount of unstructured data in Azure. Unstructured data means there are no restrictions on the kind of data it can hold. It could be a video file, text file, images, binaries, log files, and so on. As these files does not have a fixed structure, it's called blobs or binary large objects. Blobs are uploaded to a blob container for secure and fast access. Think of a blob container as a folder or a bucket that holds multiple blobs, where a blob is an actual data file that you want to store. Blob is an object based storage and your blobs can be accessed by your client applications and users over a secured HTTP or HTTPS connection. All right, let's quickly do a quick recap of the blob storage that we have just seen. So blob storage is used to serve images or documents directly to a browser such as a static website hosting using a content delivery network. It is also used to store files for distributed access. And you can also stream videos and audios directly from your blob storage because those are also the static files. And it is also used to store data for backup and restore, disaster recovery and for archiving purpose. You can also store data for further analysis by an on-premises or Azure hosted service. So there are a lot of use cases of using an Azure blob storage. So this is what we have seen so far for Azure blob storage. It will be similar to a blob storage, but instead of blobs, we have files in Azure file storage. Instead of uh, containers, we have file shares. So these are called file shares. And this is file share B. The other difference is how the files are accessed by the application and by the user. So in blob, it was accessed over HTTP or HTTPS, whereas in Azure file storage, it is accessed over your NFS or SMB protocol. Right. So think of it as mounting your file share as a network drive on multiple computers over cloud or on premises. So like you have your, let's say these two are your VMs. There is a file share over here. So you can mount this file share to both the VMs at the same time. So this is how you would use an Azure file share. This is, if you have worked with AWS before, this is similar to Elastic File Storage. Now let's quickly recap about Azure File Storage. Well, it enables you to create file shares in the cloud and access these file shares from anywhere with an internet connection. Azure File Storage exposes file share using SMB 3.0 protocol or NFS protocol. Once you have created a storage account, you can upload files to Azure file storage using the Azure portal or tools such as AZ copy. You can attach a network drive to multiple computers. And this is what file storage will do for you. It has two performance tier based on your cost and performance requirements. The first one is standard tier, which is a hard disk based hardware in the data center like SDD for slower performance, but lower cost. It also has a premium tire which uses SSDs and it provides a greater throughput, but it is costlier than the standard tier. Based on your performance and cost requirement, you can put your Azure file storage in either of those tiers. 
Now let's have a look at Azure Queue Storage. Let's suppose you have an application that performs a certain number of tasks, task one, task two, and task three. These tasks are then passed to Azure Queue Storage in terms of messages. It becomes messages when transferred to Queue Storage. The size of each message can go up to 64 KB. Then these messages are then transferred to a Azure service for further processing such as Azure function. And it performs the asynchronous processing on these messages. So this process is called asynchronous processing of the messages. So this is how an Azure queue storage works. You can store a massive amount of semi-structured data in Azure as well. Semi-structured data means no SQL data that does not require a fixed schema such as a JSON file, document based data, a key value pair based data and so on. As these files do not have a fixed schema and does not use SQL concepts such as foreign key joins and relationships, data is uploaded to Azure table inside a storage account for fast and secure access. So we have seen Azure Queue Storage, Azure File Storage, Azure Blob Storage and Azure Table. But all these storages are part of a bigger storage service which is Storage Account. So Storage Account can have multiple tables, blobs, file and queues. It is used to store messages, files, unstructured data and semi-structured data in the form of these services that we have just seen. It is highly scalable and can hold petabytes of data. Storage account name should be unique within Azure. So this would be a sample endpoint of an Azure service. The first block is your storage account name, which is what we have seen should be a unique name. The second is type based on the service that we have used either table, blob, file or queue. So that would be the type over there and the last part would be same for like whatever service you are using. So it will remain the same. Then we have a concept called storage access tier. So based on your performance and cost requirement, so you put your Azure blobs in one of those access tiers. So we have a hot tier, cool tier and an archival tier. So let's quickly have a look at these two first. So in hot tier is the default access storage tier. That means when you, whenever you create an Azure blob storage, this will be selected by default. And it is used to access frequently access data like your images, your static files that is served by a website and you know, website needs to access it frequently. So all those use cases are for hot tier. It provides highest performance, but at the same time, it is costliest because it is providing you the fastest performance and lower latency. Cool tier is used to store infrequently accessed data and it has to be stored for at least 30 days. It is cheaper than hot tier and at the same time, it provides a lower performance than hot tier. You can migrate your storage from hot tier to cool tier to save the storage cost. So keep that in mind if you want to save the cost, but you can compromise with the data access performance. Then you can just migrate it from hot tier to cool tier. Then the next one is archival tier. Archival tier cannot be set at the account level. You can set it on the blob level. It is used for archival storage as the name suggests, but you should have the data at least stored for 180 days to be used as archive tier. Then it has the highest latency because it is cheapest among all and it takes hours for the data retrieval. And you cannot directly just use the data from archive tier. You first have to change it from hot tier or cool tier then the blob will be rehydrated. That's the process that it performs. And you can only read the blob only when the rehydration process is completed. So this process takes art based on the size and length of the data. And it is cheapest among all. So you use 
uh, this tier when you don't have to retrieve the data instantly. It is generally used for archival for audit and compliance purpose or long term retrieval of your logs and so on. Now we have a concept called Azure Storage Redundancy. Azure always stores multiple copies of your data so that it is protected from planned and unplanned events such as hardware failures, network or power outage or natural disasters. You select the redundancy option based on your cost and your availability requirements. The first one is locally redundant storage which replicates your data three times within a single data center in the primary region. Even if two copies of your data gets corrupted, you still have the data available through the third copy. It provides the service in least cost and offer least durability. Because if your data center fails, the data will be lost. Then we have another option which is zone redundant storage. Zone redundant storage replicates your Azure storage data synchronously across three Azure availability zones in the primary region. Then we have geo redundant storage, which in which your data is replicated to a secondary region so that your data will be highly available if there is a region failure as well. So this is done through geo replication within secondary region. There is also a read access geo redundant storage, which is RAGRS in which data of your secondary region is read only to save some storage cost. And there is a geo zone redundant storage in which the primary region data is replicated in multiple availability zone and secondary region is just locally redundant storage that means it is replicated across three locations within the same data center. So you choose your redundant option based on your availability and your cost requirement. Right guys time for the knowledge checks as this was a longer topic there are around 12 questions as part of the knowledge checks and as I wanted to cover everything that we have discussed and everything that is required as part of AZ 900 exam. So make sure to take the screenshot of this page and this page and the third page as well which is this one. Try to attempt these questions and let me know in the comment section if you face any difficulty answering in any of those. If you know the answer, let us know in the comment section and share it with the wider community so that other can also take help from it. Alright, that's it for this video folks. I hope this video was somewhat beneficial to you in understanding the Azure storage concept and helpful in AZ900 certification preparation. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and if you are new to my channel, consider subscribing it. Let me know in the comment section below what you think about the video and to face any difficulty in understanding any concepts. Feel free to join our discord server for our weekly informational sessions and um, I will put the link in the description section. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you soon with the next video.